Oh. That is not supposed to be in your distributor cap. Be working on my 1950 Farmall Cub. This Cub is kind of special because it's a family tractor. It was my wife's grandfather's, then her uncle got it, and then we got it from our uncle. We've probably had it for about 20 years. This was my first tractor that got me going into the flywheelers and tractor shows and stuff. And it used to run. At some point we had some problems with the fuel. It just kind of sat and became yard art. Since it is a family tractor, we're going to try to get it going. Not only is it a family tractor, but it's also what they call a demonstrator. Back in 1950, International had a big sales campaign, mid-century sales campaign, and they sold tractors. And the deal was all these dealerships had these white demonstrators to draw attention. That's what the whole campaign was about. If you wanted to order a tractor, you were thinking about ordering a tractor, they'd bring the demonstrator out to your farm, show you what it could do, and let you drive it. It would then uh, hopefully make the sale and you'd order a tractor from them. Now, they can't tell you by the serial number that this was a demonstrator this one the serial number is in the range we know the range of the serial numbers for demonstrators and this one has white paint underneath the red so what the dealerships did during the promotion they got the white tractors and it was international white and then at the end of the promotion they were told paint the tractors red and sell them like any other tractor very few survived in their original white paint and were still out there because they were just painted over and resold but if you look, and we'll get, we'll get closer with the camera, you'll see there's white all over this tractor, different parts of the tractor. So it, it was a demonstrator. And when, if we restore it, it'll be restored back to a white demonstrator tractor. Well, do you think we're going to be able to get it running? I think so. If it's not locked up, um, we kept the cover on the exhaust. And uh, it's been outside, but it had the hood on it. So I think we should be in good shape. Hopefully no water got in the engine. Okay, it may be hard to see with all the rust and mildew and stuff but there's white paint here white paint here and on the intake there's white paint come back down here to the transmission there's white paint all around the transmission on the front and back there's a little bit of white paint on the other side too so i can confidently say this was a demonstrator it's in the range of serial numbers and it's got white paint all over it not just a part here or there it's all over it first things first we're going to go down peek in the cylinders with this camera just see what's happening make sure we're not going to turn it over and there's a bunch of rust in there and we're going to chew everything up all right that cylinder doesn't look too bad uh doesn't look like any of the marbles still in it it's got some surface rust on it but the bores look pretty good when it's sitting this long it's expected for there to be a little bit of rust in there surface we're mostly looking at the bores we want to make sure the bores are looking good let's keep looking at that camera see what's happening uh got some gunk going up in there Is that leaves it look like leaves in there yeah that's leaves in there i don't know how the leaves went up the valves to get down there this is a four cylinder motor that makes 10 horsepower there's k-series engines now that make a thousand horsepower well you can't make a thousand off of them with four cylinders crazy to think that this one's just got 10. hopefully with the pistons being at the top the bore underneath it is protected if any moisture got in it we'll peek in this last one this one should be near bottom dead center because the other ones were near top dead center. Add the valves. The valves are pretty pretty rusty, but inside the bore, there's the wall, there's the top of the cylinder. So it doesn't look that bad. Since we didn't see any marble down in them cylinders, we're gonna go ahead and put some more in just to lubricate it while we're working. We're not sure if this motor's froze up. Uh, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it in a high gear, rock it back and forth, and we should be able to see if it's free or not doing that. I tried to save it. There hasn't been a bird in here in at least a week. The tires are buried a little bit too much. We're going to try turning over this fan. It's hooked up to the belt, not directly up the crank. So we, it might not turn the crank. It might just spin this belt. We'll see. Oh, oh, that is free. Yep. Crank is turning. We're getting more resistance off the fan shroud than we are the motor. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna go ahead and take the hood off. There's just a couple bolts that's stopping us. We can get down in there and take the fan trout out. I reckon if you just hit it really hard, it'd come off. Yeah. <laughs> oh. uh, I think we might have to bend our exhaust pipe. Yeah, I got pipe wrench. Who does this guy think he is? This one's for you. 
This yeah. one's for me. <laughs> All right, that gives us enough. Oh, wires? Yeah. Oh, this looks like a, a lot less tractor without the hood on it. It's kind of sad looking. <laughs> the bottom of this radiator support is all gone, so it's causing it to fall. The fan's gonna hit it. If we do get it running, we don't want that to happen. We're gonna hold this up some kind of support, maybe a strap, get it out of the way. There ain't no way we're gonna be able to get those off without cutting them. That's why we're doing this for the time being, just so we can get it running. That way we don't spend 10 hours trying to get bolts off. All right, so we haven't checked spark, but we know the motor's free. We're not sure if it has compression yet. We need to have fuel for it to run. Next step, we're gonna go ahead and pop this carburetor off. I don't wanna mess with this air box. We're just gonna go ahead and disconnect it. Look at that. We go ahead and pop this carburetor off, clean it. There's a chance that it's good, but. Man. It's bleeding. Oh, look at that. Look at all that sand coming out. Something in there. on it. it doesn't want to slide compared to other carbon with all this crud in it it definitely would have clogged up a jet almost instantly yeah we would have been out of business So I really can't turn it over because the belt keeps slipping. Hooking up jumper cables to the starter, hopefully we can turn it over. It is a six volt starter, but you can use 12 volts on a six volt. It's just gonna spin it over a lot faster. That starter is not wanting to give us any life. It's not even sparking. It should be sparking when we hit the jumper cable to the top of that post. So what we're thinking is the starter probably isn't grounded right or there's some kind of wiring issue with the starter. I'm gonna pop the starter off, clean its connection in between it and the block because that's how the starter itself is grounded. Start there. What the? Oh, wow, there's a dirt robber's nest. Oh, ah, oh, shoot. Look at that. That is not supposed to be in your distributor cap. You just pissed off a bunch of ants. Oh, my God, are you serious? Larvae. Mm. Oh, right dude. Oh. Oh. <laughs> you serious? Oh. oh. It looks like rice. Mm. I think you did have a bad connection. Yeah, I don't reckon we would have had spark. I love me an impact screwdriver. Yep. Yeah, she was just a little stuck. More ant hill. There's the points right there. The ants get in there too? No, it looks pretty ant free. That's good. They actually don't look that bad. Let's go ahead and file them since we're here. All right. Take all the spark plugs out. We're making sure we got spark in all of them. There we go. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see a little bit right there. Nothing. 
All right, so we were getting a tiny itty bitty bit of spark. Let me see that one. So we're gonna clean these spark plugs off and the contacts where we're touching it to the head just to make sure that we're getting a really good contact. These spark plugs are super rusty, so is the head. Normally it'll arc, it was arcing, but we wanna clean this up and see if maybe that's the problem that we're having. While Brady's cleaning up those spark plugs, I thought I'd talk about the, uh, the promotion that Farmall did and used these white tractors in. Uh, it was the mid-century big sales promotion they had going on, and they made the tractors, the Farmall Cub, the Super A, the Model C, they were all white tractors and they were demonstrators that the salesman would take out. I did some research and I found the paperwork that they gave to the dealerships and to the salesmen, and they were very specific on what the company wanted them to do. Each salesman, when they had to go demonstrate a tractor, they were supposed to wear uh, international Farmall overalls. And when they went out there, they had to be clean and they had to have at least two pairs. So when they went out there to do these demonstrations and there was even instructions on there, if you need more overalls, contact this, this person and they'd get you some more. Some of the neat things in this promotion, they, uh, they were in kind of like competition, all the regions, every top salesperson in each region would win a trip, all expense paid trip to the manufacturing facilities for the tractors. And so they were trying to get that. Like I said, at the end of the promotion, none of these tractors were sold white. They weren't supposed to. They were supposed to be painted red and then sold as red tractors like any other farm all. That's why you're seeing the white come out on this because it has white paint underneath there. And that's the way that uh, if we restore this tractor, it'll be restored back white. If you have one, it's better to restore it white because it's more unique, especially if you can show that this one was originally a white tractor. Uh, a demonstrator so that's what we'll do if we get further along in this project hmm well we did get spark out of it we got a stuck valve on this one oh you can see it's not moving these ones are good we got a stuck valve here and we got a stuck valve on this one we might be able to tap it down that was a common it. issue with these you can take this head off and the valves are right there they're easy to see and also there's a side cover that you can take off and you can see get in there to see what's moving what's not so with this motor you can see down through the spark plug holes and see the valves some of the valves are stuck open i'm going to turn the motor over real fast check which ones are stuck and then put some blaster in it and work them this one's clear so give this one a little bit drink up That one's stuck, stuck. So is that one. What was the last one? It was this one. So we got three valves stuck. So right now we're gonna go ahead and pop this head off. James marked all of our spark plug wires for us. These valves just don't wanna get unstuck. I don't wanna beat them and bend them. So we're just gonna take it off. It shouldn't take but five minutes to pop it off and back on. Hopefully the valves are a lot easier to get unstuck once we get it open. This all was in our motor. Probably a good thing we took it off anyway. We're gonna clean these up, get these valves loose. These two are stuck, so is this one. So we can turn it over real fast and show you guys. Do it again. kind of neat is we're going to be using an extractor set that belonged to my wife's grandfather who owned this tractor and this was given to me and it's so old that it's in a wooden box with the extractors so we're going to use this and see if we can get that bolt out it's helped us out on a couple other situations we were in a bind so we're hoping that I'll do it again
God damn it. Now we're fucked. As many damn heat cycles as this thing's been through, I'm surprised it ain't let loose yet. 11 16th, James. 11 yeah. 16th for the win. Wiggle it back and forth now because we moved it. Yeah. Yeah, but you're not moving that weld. Yeah, you're not moving the weld. It looks like. Well, what you can do is weld on top of that nut and, and put those together. Well, luck has not been on our side. We broke a head bolt. We tried to extract it. We can't. We've tried for four hours to do it. We've welded uh, easy out just about everything you can think of. I'm smiling, but uh, this does really suck. But right now we're taking the manifold off. We're gonna try to unstick the valves while we're waiting on some kind of solution to get that head bolt out. I wanna go home. We have beat, soaked, heated up these valves and they just don't want to get unstuck. Right now, we are soaking them in blaster. I'll show you guys in a second what we plugged them with. Pretty genius. We got a tapered rubber plug right here. And then this one is when you buy a new battery, the positive post and the negative post come with a little plastic cap. That's one of those wrapped in Teflon tape. That's how we got it plugged up. They're soaking. We're giving up on it tonight, but we'll be back. Before you guys get upset, we did order a new valve before we started doing this. Up and down force just wasn't cutting it, so we had to add a little bit of twisting force. It's slowly letting go, but it's it's a long time before it wants to fully let go. All right, this valve just will not come out, so let me show you guys what I'm doing right now. That's actually working, and it's pretty smart. Sorry for the not so great angle, but if you know engines, then right here is gonna be the bottom of your valves. This one right here is stuck. We have put vice grips on it. We have done literally everything. We've soaked it, heated it, soaked it, heated it, just let it soak and it just, nothing will work to get this thing moving. It just, it'll twist barely, but it just won't come up. So you can see I've got it quite a ways up now. This is all the way up. This is where we got this one. So I did get the retaining clip off the valve. The spring's still on it, but the valve is loose. I don't have enough force with vice grips to just pull it up. And I've tried prying. I don't want to mess up the valve seat. We've already marred up this area too bad, but this is part of the combustion chamber in here, all around here. So as long as we keep this relatively flat, we should be good. So the one time we were trying to move this valve, work it, break it loose, we finally hammered it down. We got it all the way down and we're like, okay, sweet. Now that motor will bump it up. We'll hammer it down, bump it up, and slowly it will become free. Well, that didn't happen. It just got really stuck and it was enough where the starter couldn't pull it, push it up. It just couldn't. So with enough soaking and heating, eventually we got it where it would barely slide up with us turning the fan, someone tapping the cylinder down and everything and it finally popped back up. So we really don't wanna push it back down. We wanna push it up to get it out. So I'm putting shims right here. So when the motor turns over, it's gonna bump that valve up. So we did get this old girl to pop up a little bit. That's small victory. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. See, it just punched it way up. So I finally got 
what's left of the valve out and kind of funny how we did it basically on the tappet i just put this bolt it was longer at one point but i shaved it down it got to the point where the head was hitting and it couldn't go up any farther so i got another one and i cut it stuck it up in there put this on top kept going and then i kept shimming it as it was going just turning the starter over and then i had to make sure i had the whole rotation of the motor with enough speed and inertia to push it up because if you were just tapping the starter, it just wasn't doing it. I finally got the valve out. We got a new valve on the way, new spring. Hopefully we'll be able to get this old girl running. I don't know why this one valve was so hard to get out, but we got it out. So I'm working on cleaning up this head right now. And let me show you guys what I'm doing with the bolts. So I'm cleaning up all the bolts right now on a wire wheel. And you can see the difference right there. That's just with wire wheeling, makes them look basically brand new. Got some pitting on the top. Can't really make that perfect. We're also gonna hit the bottom of this with a wire wheel, clean it up a little bit. And then we'll probably run some water through this water jacket in here. Hopefully knock some of that flaking off that's coming off in there. Doing research online, uh, there, this is a common problem with these old tractors. You break the head bolts trying to get the head off. If the weld nut on doesn't work and blaster and all that stuff, this is one way to do it where you can drill it out and keep it straight. You want to be perfectly in line in the center of the bolt. You drill it out to the right size and then you can re-tap it and put another head bolt in there. The head, if you want to come down here, you see how the head is. These bolts go down in the head and you see how thick it is, you know, it's over an inch thick. So what you do is this is going to be our guide and you take a quarter inch piece of pipe and you can set it inside the hole in the head to get a center on your bolt that's stuck. You drill with a drill bit that just fits inside this, this pipe and you drill it down in there and it will make a dimple into the head bolt and that should be your center. Then you can come back and use a smaller drill bit and drill it and then go in larger drill bits up until it's the right size so that you can re-tap it. I'm gonna start drilling. What you doing there? Originally we tried that easy out, the easy out broke, then we started welding stuff on top of it. But once we started welding, the easy out got buried. Now, since we're drilling it out, we gotta get the easy out out. Easy outs are really hard, so it's almost impossible to drill them with a drill bit, but you can break them up. If you hit them with a center punch, you're able to break them up slowly, and basically I'm just moving in a circle, so maybe I might be able to get it to start untwisting, or I'll just break it up and the piece will slowly fly out, and then we can drill the bolt, which is a lot softer. Dad's going to town, he's gonna to get us a harder drill bit, so hopefully we can drill that out. Me and James, we got James now, are gonna be here, and we got an ignition tune-up kit that we're gonna install, and then also we're gonna lap the new valve that we got, because if you guys remember, we totally messed up that old valve. When you buy a new valve, you gotta lap it. So you gotta make sure that the seat's really good, that's what lapping is. You guys remember, that valve, it broke, we broke it because we couldn't get it out. So what we have here is we have a drill bit that's just slightly smaller than this. So we're able to slide it in and basically hone where the valve goes into. You guys watch. We're not trying to cut. We're just sliding it in and out and basically taking any kind of resistance or gunk off the walls. Just taking that out so that hopefully that valve is going to slide in there nice and smooth now. Look at all that gunk that came off on there. Jeez. All right. Hopefully this bad boy will slide right down in there now. Look at that. That baby's moving up and down like a dream. That's a huge improvement. We also got to fix this one. This valve's also stuck right next to it. And then after that, lap this, and we should be good to go. I got new springs for both of these, because if you guys remember, we, we applied heat to both of these to try to get them out. When you apply heat to springs when they're under tension, it basically makes the spring lose all of its tension. Well, we got a nice little cup holder for our valve lapping compound. So we're just gonna put some of this on this bad boy. All this is is kind of like just a medium, like sand, flip it over. And this is gonna help us create a perfect seal, hopefully. 
We got a pretty good cut on that baby now. It's going all the way to the edge right here on that lip. I'm happy with that. We got that valve compressed. So now we got to get this. Oh, f me. What the fuck was that? That was the piece we needed. It just went down into the bottom of the crankcase. So that piece just fell down into the crankcase. So I think we're probably gonna have to take the oil pan off. This is one heck of a will it start, man. This is like a will it rebuild more than a will it start, man. This is, we are paying our stupid tax left and right over and over and over again. And uh, well, I'm tired of paying taxes. <laughs> so, <laughs> things better start going our way here soon. Well, James is the man. Look at that. James pulled that bad boy out with a magnet. We don't gotta pull the pan. So you don't have to cry. I don't have to cry. Well, I've already done it, but I don't gotta cry anymore. Now you're crying in happiness. Yeah, now, now tears of joy. This right here is the valve we gotta pop out. So James is gonna turn over the motor. With him turning over the motor, it's gonna pop it up. It's gonna let us grab it. All the way. There we go. All right. Try to grab it and pull it up if you can. I don't understand how only two of them got that stuck. That's what I don't get. As long as we don't break this one, we'll be in good shape. Dude, even Look at all that gunk that's clogged up in there, dude. I don't get it. This thing still looks pretty good, but uh, we're gonna hone that out real fast with that drill. Show her who's boss. There's a lot of gunk on the edge of that blade. So we're just gonna repeat the same process with this, lap it, since we already got it out. We're not gonna lap the rest of them. I'm just gonna take it that they probably got good enough seals. If they don't, she'll probably run on two cylinders. So it's fine. Yep, it cut good. You guys were probably making fun of us for our plug, but this thing don't wanna come out. And it still had fluid in it, dude. Dang. Just a cap for a battery terminal. We got them valves lapped. They're smooth as butter right now. And we're gonna put these collars back on. These are the little things that uh, fell down into the crank. But that's basically it. Throw the spring on it. There's a, a little piece also, let me show you guys, that the collars fit into. And that's what holds it on. Super simple, won't take but five seconds. Honestly, whoever designed this, and then a massive hole underneath it to go straight down to the bottom of your engine is awful. We don't like you very, very much. Really, she'll probably start without getting this head bowled out, but we should probably do it right. Let's just pop one of these in here and see if she's got spark, better spark than she had. So we still definitely have no spark. That's all right. We got more than just that for her. Pop this cap off, start giving her some love. We are popping this thing off for the second time now, but we got shiny new parts to put in it this time. Hopefully gonna give us the spark we need. Basically got everything new. If we do get this tractor run, and one thing I will say is uh, we have definitely earned it. We are on probably four days worth of work now on this thing. Just that head bolt alone has taken so much time to try to get it out and we still haven't got it out. Those valves were such a pain. You saw how stuck they were. We couldn't pull them up. We were prying them. Just nothing would pop them out. I've never seen a valve that stuck. And honestly, I don't think I'll ever see a valve that stuck again unless it's welded. All right, so right here, got a replacement for that down there. These points, we got replacement points in that bag.
kind of gunky right there. The points didn't look bad before when I peeked in here, so I hope it's not that wasn't the issue. Maybe it was our point gap. I don't know. getting really excited because if we have spark after this we've seen the inside of the motor we know the motor turns over we know that now none of the valves are stuck and if we have spark dude all we need is fuel that baby's probably got a little bit of compression but uh it's not like she had very much to start with i think she's gonna if she's got spark i think she's gonna start up for us oh and i i just eyeballed the point gap because i can't find my feeler gauges i'm pretty good at uh at eyeballing 0 0.01 of an inch so don't worry guys we got it. I think I did this all wrong. I don't need these. I'll just eyeball it. Now we're checking for cylinder one spark. Hopefully we didn't, we don't have it 180 out. Nothing? I'm seeing spark up here where your pliers are. Oh shit. Yep. No. Yep. Okay, it's sparked sparked right when it was at top dead center so we don't have it 180 out this is good so this one's timed let's do two double check that we got two right lift it up Hit. yep that one's good like we talked about earlier we made that guide that went into the head we were able to drill it out after going to town and getting some better bits because everything was hardened. Uh, according to uh, research, the bolts that were in this head were grade nine. We were dealing with that, plus we heated it several cycles, so that was an extremely hard bolt. But we eventually drilled it out with a quarter inch drill bit through that guide. And now we're gonna try the easy out again because the walls of that bolt are really thin. We might be able to get it out. If not, we're not gonna push it real hard. We might get lucky. If not, then we'll drill it out and tap it out. Is that the same easy out we broke? This is the same easy out we broke, but we broke the tip off of it because we should have had a larger hole to start with. That bolt is definitely not moving. Okay. I really don't want to break this easy out off again because now it'd be a lot thicker and a lot harder to get out of there. We're drilling out the three quarter to five sixteenths so that we can use it as a guide also. And we got our vise inside of our vise. Let's go. <laughs> we all have our vices. I think we made it. Okay. I think that's bottomed out there. Yeah, bottomed out the threads. What do you think, James? You tired? It's only yeah. 10 o'clock. Ready to get you this thing look started? down in there? This old girl is looking real good for a big day. What do you think, James? Get her started. I think she Daddy? wants us to start her. I think it's time. Well, that looks, that looks like it don't belong on that thing. That's way too nice. Honestly, that's, that's a pretty cheap head gasket, but it looks really nice. So to prevent our current predicament in the future, uh, put a never seize on all the bolts before we torque it down to spec. It's always nice to think about that before you tighten them all down, but at least we didn't have, have them all torqued when we thought about it. What's so bad about these engines, these farmall engines? Why do you need that never seize? So almost every single one of these bolts go directly down into the water jackets, water, metal, rust. So uh, 
basically welds itself to the block with all the rust and crud that builds up on them. You think that was our problem with that? It was absolutely our problem. And now I don't know, boys, if y'all have used never sees before, but you're going to find out it gets everywhere. I already feel that. Let me see your hand. <laughs> this is the moment of truth. So when we were first taking this head off, we got all the head all the head bolts off except for one, and I am the one that broke the head bolt right here. Right here. So all this time that we've spent over 10 hours working on this head bolt, trying to weld a nut to it, you know, trying to do everything we can, use a easy out, and we ended up finally having to drill it out and retap it. So we've done that. And hopefully our little jig with the quarter inch pipe worked. It was centered properly. So now it's the moment of truth to see. Moment this. of truth. What do you think, James? Is it going to do it? I hope so. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> All right. Okay, here All we right. go. Come on, baby. That's it. Bro. Woo! Oh, yeah. Now, we're using a washer on here because the grade 8 bolt that we bought is just a hair longer than the regular head bolts and instead of cutting it off a uh, easy thing to do is to put a washer on there and this is a grade 8 washer so that when we torque it down we're not going to have any problems so let's get some never seize on it most flathead engines torque specs starting in going out i'm just going to start with snugging everything up get to about 20 foot pounds what i can do with my hand in this 3 8 drive ratchet is that calibrated uh yeah, we zero it in once a week, so it's close enough. <laughs> this is what the last, you'd say 20 something hours? I'd say 20 something hours of work leads up to the moment of truth. Was it all worth it? Or are we going to have to put another 20 hours of time in it than uh, $200? What do you think? I don't know. We still got a little bit to do though. We got to get the carb back on. Nah, I am. The whole day, man, I've been like, why were we so happy in the last one? Why were we so happy in the last one? And then now I'm like, oh yeah, there's an end. And when you get to the end, oh, I feel so good. We still had hope in the front beginning. <laughs> yeah, it starts off real cheery, something goes wrong, and it's like, ah, oh, ah. Oh. And then we'll get to the end again, it's like, oh man, I love you guys. So we evicted birds, we evicted ants, we broke a head bolt, we had two stuck valves that we had to fight tooth and nail for, and now we're finally here, ready to turn her over for the first time actually trying to get her to run this time not just turning her over i'm going to handle the carburetor give her a little bit of choke we're going to turn her over with just gas for the first couple seconds if she needs some starting fluid we're going to hit her with some let's do it yep. <laughs> I think it's got a decent amount of compression because it's turning over slower than it was when it had the head on it. Fighting a little bit, got a little bit of resistance on it. She was trying to fire off there right at the end. She was kind of ugging just a little bit, but. Whoa, smoking over here. All right, just stop. Something with the starter. Yep. What do we say? You can use 12 volts with a six volt. It's just, it's just not a good idea. I think it'll bite you. It's real close. We know we got some low compression, so we're going to squirt a little oil in each cylinder and see if we can bring the compression up enough to get it to fire off. The rings may be stuck in the pistons. It might need to be rebuilt. Don't know. I know it was rebuilt in the past when uh, Lisa's grandfather had it, but that's been a long, long time ago. It'll smoke. If it runs, it'll smoke, though. That's all right. Okay. Yep.
Well, it's midnight. After putting oil in the cylinders, it started to want to fire off, but our starter's just too hot to keep going. You're gonna have to call it here, but we'll be back at it tomorrow. What do you think, James? Well, I'm hoping today's the day. Today's so the day? We can get over. You think she's gonna actually crank? I hope so. I mean, we turned her over for what, 20 minutes and nothing? Yeah, so. What my... do you think she's gonna magically start now? I don't know. A little bit more, you know, kisses and love. I Maybe she might. Maybe she might treat us good too. I <laughs> hope so, because we're treating her good right now. We worked till the midnight hour last night and everybody was tired. It was trying to crank, but we know we got low compression. Decided to put some transmission fluid in the cylinders, see if maybe that would help soak around the rings and maybe break them loose. We're gonna blow that transmission fluid out now, put a little bit of oil in there to bring up our compression and see if we can get the fire off today. Hopefully it will. New day, maybe it'll decide to the run for us today. New day, better luck. Hopefully. <laughs> Can't be much worse luck, but I hate to say that too. <laughs> That's with the clutch in. We just filled up the radiator in the block with some water. And uh, we got a slight radiator leak. And uh, it's coming out the head too. That warm? I know what's wrong with it. It ain't got no gas in it.
Now she might run. <laughs> Three out of the... I don't need this. Also put the other hose on the top and fill it up and maybe pinch this off or put something in the hole up here they'll hold water and they'll then you can run it a little bit longer all right let's do it what's that called that we just had to pay uh i think it's called the stupid tax <laughs> that one had some interest on it <laughs> yeah we, we <laughs> we've had to pay about tenfold today <laughs> what do you think james i'm tired of paying my taxes <laughs> <laughs> getting pretty expensive <laughs> <laughs> All right, my dad and James are taking it up to the barn right now. They're going to throw some water in the block, cool it off a little bit, because she was definitely getting hot towards the end there running for the first time. This is awesome. Uh, very unfortunate that uh, I made that mistake of wiring it wrong, but stuff happens. Wait, sorry. Do you know how to drive a tractor, James? Yeah, I know how to drive a tractor. Yeah? Yeah, I'm driving one right now. Yeah? Yeah. With another tractor. <laughs> so you're driving two tractors? I'm driving right? two tractors. <laughs> And these old tractors they don't actually have a water pump rely on the change in temperature of the liquid in there so as it goes in the bottom of the engine uh -huh. it heats up and as the as it heats up the hot water rises comes out through the top of the head there goes back up in this upper radiator hose back in the radiator it cools down it goes down and then it just makes that circuit it just kind of circulates like that there's actually no pump and we got a big hole right there don't put your finger back on it, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Huh. Okay. All right. Remember, big kid, man's got some brains. Remember, kids, stay in school and use your pencil. <laughs> We're waiting until we get on the good grass to start pulling it so we have a little bit more traction. Then we're going to disconnect it. Hopefully it runs as good as it did before and we'll be able to drive it around the yard. Let's do it. Let's try third. <laughs> you want to go that fast? Uh, all right. Well, we just killed her, uh, but we did make it. Did we made it all the way about where that tractor is. I was probably being a little bit too adventurous, trying to throw her right in third and get going from a stop. We'll shift into third once we get going in second. Clutch is still getting a little bit stuck. You got to push it up with your toe. Kind of dangerous, but whatever. What do you think, Daddy? I'm happy. I 
I'm glad it's running. That's a good, that's a good feeling when they run after we did so much work. Learned a lot on this project. How does it feel to know that the distributor wires were messed up by an unknown, unknown person? Um, I know who it was, and it wasn't me, and it wasn't James, and it wasn't Mama. So. Well, we'll have to have a poll in the comments to figure out who it was, but let's get going. You ready, James? <laughs> Not that much. There we go. All right, I'm letting off. Give it a little bit of throttle as I'm letting off. Be nice if it was in gear. Everybody get out of my way! I'm going to farm! <laughs> you want to hit third? <laughs> All right. Oh! No, 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 no. no, she won't do it. She's just purring. Yeah, I'm good. You want to try driving her, James? I'm good. Come you on. want to drive her? Yeah, I want to drive her.